The God of the Bible is the devil. John 8 44 clearly defines the devil as a murderer from the beginning. The very first book of the Bible in Genesis, God mass murders the entire planet in the great flood. Genesis 41, God kills 70,000 people. Exodus 9, God kills 300,000 people. Exodus 12, God kills half a million people. Deuteronomy 2, God kills half a million people again. Man, this guy really doesn't like humans. Judges 7, God kills 120,000 people. And in Judges 21, he accepts human sacrifice. In 1 Kings, he kills 100,000. And in 2 Kings, he kills 185,000. In 2 Chronicles, he kills 1 million innocent Ethiopians. Again, the definition of the devil is that he is a murderer and a liar. In 2 Corinthians, the devil masquerades himself as an angel of light. So what exactly is the devil? He's an evil war god who pretends he's a god of love. And there's only one character in the Bible who fits that definition, and that's the god of the Bible. Shalom. Oh boy, oh boy. This is why I hate TikTok, man. Before I start, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Rarachak Wadash. Dub honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And y'all just heard the devil, you know, which is uh, the irony of it all. Is uh the devil is calling out the most high. All right. I mean the, the the audacity of the devil to call anybody the devil. But uh, you know, that's not even the point of this video. I just want to point out the 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 blatant lies that's being displayed, and that's why that's one of the reasons why I hate TikTok is because you know, with these kind of platforms. It gives these people the notion that because we're in the information age that they can just hop on these, you know, social media platforms and display their ignorance and present it as if it's facts. And it's nothing but straight up confusion, a bunch of propaganda, a bunch of half truths mixed with lies, a lot of misinformation. You know, I remember I said this, you know, not too long ago. Just imagine if TikTok and these other platforms had the option, just like YouTube, to to strike videos with biblical misinformation. If 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 they had that option where they had an algorithm to, you know, strike any video that's teaching or publicizing biblical misinformation. You know how many videos would get striked down every day? Especially on TikTok. You've had people come on TikTok and say that the Most High had a wife. You know, Asherah was the wife of the Most High, a goddess. So the Most High had an equal goddess, you know, beside him. When the scriptures say there is no God with me, you had gay pastors, you know, uh, lesbian dyke pastors come on and lie against the Bible. You had dudes come on there and say that, you know, where's the original copy of the Bible? You know. Now you got this devil <laughs> pretty much saying that the most I himself is is the devil. And that's coming, you know, of course a devil would say that. And what this shows is that these devils, they have no fear of the Most High whatsoever. Let me get Psalms 36 and 1, and I'm going to start, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the NLT translation real quick. And they can't help themselves. This is, this is their nature. All right, this is uh, Psalms 36 and 1 in the NLT. It says, Sin whispers to the wicked deep within their hearts. They have no fear of the Most High at all. And that's why they'll get up on these platforms and say anything. They'll utter anything before the Most High. But, you know, we can't be upset. You know, we, we can't fret ourselves when the wicked do things like this. And the Most High himself is long suffering. He said that these things would happen. Wickedness shall be increased. Iniquity shall abound.
people are going to say all type of, you know, wicked, evil things. They're going to do wicked and evil things. And it's just going to continuously increase until the Lord finally addresses it. But, you know, the sins are just going up to heaven right now, just piling up. So they can say what they want, but we all know that, you know, everybody must give an account in the day of the Lord, man. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account in the day of judgment. And we know that this devil in the day of judgment, there's no hope for him. All right, they were literally tailor-made for the day of evil to be punished. So the Lord is letting them get it, get it all off. Get it all off, man. Get your shit off while you're still here. Because that day is definitely approaching. So it says, verse 2, it says, In their blind conceit, they cannot see how wicked they really are. Now these, and that's these devils for sure. Are they so blinded by their own evil, they can't even see how wicked they really are, man. They do a lot of virtual, virtual signaling. They try to, you know, play victim. They try to act like they're righteous. But they're wicked as hell, man. And I guarantee you, people that, that bought into this TikTok video, because I know this is a straight up TikTok video. Anybody that bought into it, I guarantee you they didn't fact check anything that was said. All, this, all the things that he was bringing out, I'm pretty sure a lot of people did not fact check that. You can actually fact check everything that was said. And when you actually go into the scriptures and search it out and be like the, the, um, the church of Berea, you see that everything that he said was straight up a, a lie, a bold freaking lie. All cap, man. That's why I hate TikTok, man. All right. Go and fact check everything that he said. When he, he, he gave you the, the book and chapters and said this many people the Lord killed, go into those same chapters and try to and, 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 and search those facts out and see if, if, if there's truth. If the scriptures say what he's actually uh, implying, I guarantee you, you're going to see that it's not in the scripture. He made it up just so he can get his click, his, his uh, TikTok clout, so he can get his clicks. So these people don't fear the most high, and that's why the Lord is going to bring total calamities on this place. We're only in the beginning of sorrows, man. It's, it's just now starting to turn up. We ain't seen nothing yet, man. And I can't wait. I can't wait till the Lord turn it all the way up. Are right, you people going to learn not to blaspheme? Because right now, because, you know, sins against an evil work isn't executed, you're just going to continue to be wicked. And say whatever it is that, that comes to your mind because you're because you're a devil. The scriptures say not to lean upon your own understanding, but you got a lot of idiots out there that are wise in their own conceit. The scriptures say that in Proverbs, see as thou a man wise in his own conceit. A fool have more hope than him. All right, woe to him that is wise in his own eyes and prudent in his own sight. All right, hey, the simple believe if every word, but the prudent man look well to what's going. You simple if you if you bought into this damn TikTok video. And this is the devil trying to call the most high the devil. <laughs> the the, the the audacity and the projection. He's just projecting. Because his forefathers, they're known for slaughtering and, and, and spilling blood all over the planet. Millions of, uh, of bodies dead because of his forefathers. All type of war wars are the, 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 the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. The slaughtering of the Native Americans throughout North, Central, and South America. Your forefathers did that. So what would you call them? That's right. Because that's exactly what you are. You're the devil. Don't try to put your title off on, 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 on the Most High. No, you're the devil. You're that murderer from the beginning. And I'm, I'm going to get into that. Now let me finish this real quick. Psalms 36. 
and two again in the NLT it says in their blind conceit they cannot see how wicked they really are everything they say is crooked and deceitful everything they refuse to act wisely or do good and you know they're born that way let's go to Psalms 58 real quick that's why I said they can't help themselves it's, it's just in their nature He's a, he's a liar and he was a murderer from the beginning. The truth was never in him. That's how you know this is that same soul going back to the garden. That's who the Lord was talking about when he said, you have your father, the devil, man. Uh, let, me, let me go back to the KJV. Psalms 58 and 1, it says, Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yet yeah, in, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh the violence of the earth. It's like that you weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. They're poisoned as the poison of a serpent. All right, like this guy, his, his, his poison is the poison of a serpent because nothing but lies is coming out of his lips. All right, and, you know, he makes sure he had the little background, the little music playing, the sensationalized, the bullshit coming out of his mouth. To have the average viewer thinking that this is all knowledge. This ain't knowledge, man. This is straight up ignorance on display. A lot of people all of a sudden are Bible experts. In these last days. You people don't know the Bible, man. You don't know the words of the Mosai. You don't know the Mosai either. So, you know, so they're they're born like that, man. And, and that poison stays in their mouth. All right? It's, just, it's, it's venom. It's poisonous. It'll poison your mind and, and corrupt you. All right, it says, they are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. So, yeah, that, that's these devils for you. Now, as far as the Mosai, is the Mosai a murderer? Is he wicked? Is he unrighteous? Let's get real quick. Uh, Romans 9. We're going to go to Romans 9 and verse um, 14. And it says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Mosai? God forbid. The Mosai is not an unrighteous power. He's righteous. His judgments are, are, are pure. They're righteous. They're just. Let's get some scriptures on that. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 32. Yeah, Deuteronomy 32, in verse 4, it says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. The Lord has made nothing imperfect, man. Right, the Lord, is a, he's, he's a God of balance. He's a God of knowledge. He's a God of judgment. Okay? So his works are, are perfect, man. The way things are ran in the earth, his order, his divine order is perfect. It says, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. All right. He's a God of truth and without iniquity. So the most I do not sin, nor is he a liar because he tried to uh, uh, quote Yahweh Shai when he was cussing out those wicked Pharisees, the, the wicked Jews that that was uh, rejecting him. And they was even trying to uh, kill him. Because he was declaring his authority as the son of the Most High. All right, he was the savior of Israel, and they they was trying to take that from him. So he pretty much cursed them out and said, "You're of your father the devil. You're just like your your daddy the devil, man." And at that time, the 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 nation that was ruling happened to be the, the descendants of the devil. All right, they were the, the Roman Empire, the Romans, they were devils. They were murderers. 
And you had them wicked Jews that were in league with the Romans to keep their position. They were very comfortable up under the, uh, the Roman Empire. And Yahweh Shai, because of his authority and his fame, he was a threat to them in their, in their position. So the Lord called their asses out. So anyway, let's go from there. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 19 and 7. It says, Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our power, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. Or the Lord is, he's just, man. He has no respect of persons, man. All right? He, 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 if, if you're wicked, the Lord's going to judge. He's going to give you a wicked man's reward. If you're righteous, he's going to give you a righteous man's reward. You see? Matter of fact, let me see if I can find this scripture. The brothers in uh, Alabama was going into it last night going into the, 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 the balance of the Most High. The Most High is very balanced in his judgments and, you know, his, uh, his, his behavior towards men. Let me see. Uh... Was it Psalms 18? Hold on, let me go to Psalms 18 real quick. I think it might be there. Yep, is uh, Psalms 18 and 24 says, Therefore have the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, in his sight with the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful with an upright man thou wilt show thyself upright with the pure thou wilt show thyself pure and with the forward thou wilt show thyself forward all right in other words whatever work of a man that he does he's going to render that unto him man you see so if you if, if you're wicked the Lord's going to show himself to you, you know, he's, he's going to basically give you the judgment of a wicked person. Because the Heavenly Father, he's balanced and he's fair. All right. Oh, let me get a uh, Genesis 18. Another precept. Go to Genesis 18. Is when he uh, promised the uh, the birth of uh, Isaac, which was the chosen seed of of Abraham, that was going to be his heir. Uh, Genesis eighteen and yep, and this is right before the Lord's getting ready to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, and he had he had just caused to, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. If you knew about the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and you know what what it was known for. Then uh, if you have a righteous mind, then you would actually understand. Uh, Genesis 18 and I'll start at verse 20 says, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Right? So their sins was was crying up. It was, it was, it was flagrant. It was foul shit going on in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was a lot of pride. There was a lot of gluttony. There was a lot of wicked lust, inordinate affection, man. The same spirit you see right now in the earth, especially here in the West, with all this freakism going on, all this progressive, liberal, sexual liberation. You know, people walking around with the with the, with the rainbow flags, the, the the alphabet crew, the alphabet mafia. Well, it was it was going down in in that in those wicked cities. 
It says, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? And so you're going to destroy, you know, righteous people that are also there amongst these people too? And this is what the Lord said. Peradventure there, there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also, and that's like it, wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? This is what Abraham asked him. And this is what the Lord said. That that be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the slakia. Not the most I didn't say this is still uh, Abraham talking, right? And this and Abraham understood, you know, the nature of the most high, right? That he's fair, he's balanced in his judgments. It says, That be far from thee to do after the after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Now I'm surprised the devil didn't mention what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. He mentioned, you know, what happened in battle, which of course, in battle, it's going to be casualties. Hundreds of thousands of men are going to drop dead. What is this guy talking about? And also, there's a difference between killing and murder. In which uh, the elder went into it in his video. Murder is premeditated. It's unlawful and premeditated. You didn't have a just cause to put that person to death. All right? The, the, the person didn't do a crime that warrants the judgment or penalty of death. That's murder. Every, every person at the Mosai gave the green light to be slain, they all had it coming. Because guess what? The wages of sin is death. When you when you deviate from the righteous ways of the Mosai, his statutes and judgments, you're walking in the ways of sin. And when sins add up, you, the penalty is, is death. That's the cost. And guess who, who, who helped to introduce and bring that to the sons of God? Yeah, you guessed it. The sons of the wicked, starting with uh, 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 the serpent in the garden. That was the murderer from the beginning. And like I said, we're going we gonna, to uh, get to that. But this is right here. This is the Mosai explaining to Abraham that since you put it that way, because, yeah, the, the Lord is a righteous judge. He's not going to slay the righteous with the wicked. So he said, all right, well, bet. If, if, if you can find 50 righteous people in this town, I'll repent. I won't even, I'm, I'm, I won't destroy it. Find me 50, right? And it says, <clears throat> no, let me see uh, where I left off at. Yeah, verse 26, and the Lord said, if I find inside them 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the, all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure thou shalt lack five of the fifty righteous. Will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. So the Lord already knew how wicked it was. How it, it was it, nobody was righteous except Lot himself in that town. It says, and he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure thou shalt be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty sake. And he said unto him, O Lord, let not the O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure thou shalt thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, Peradventure thou shalt be twenty. So he just kept narrowing it down. If you find 20 there, and he said, I will not destroy it for 20. Go find me 20, I won't destroy it, this place. And he said, Oh Lord, let not, oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet this once. Peradventure 10 shall be found there, and he said, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. 
And the Lord went his way. And as soon as he had left, com com communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. So you see, he just kept narrowing it down. And guess what? Abraham couldn't find not one. But he was concerned for his nephew Lot, who happened to be there. Lot was the only righteous one. That's why when you go to, um, let's go to 2 Peter. Peter expounded on the history. Yeah, 2 Peter 2, verse 6, it says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should live ungodly. And people to this day do not uh, uh, learn from that example. They're even more w wicked and loose and, and, and rebellious than they ever were in this day and time. That's why this time is being kept in store, reserved until the day of fire of, of the day of judgment. All right. All you people are being uh, reserved for the day of judgment. Now, right now, you're prospering in, in your wicked ways and the Lord isn't, you know, he's not judging you altogether because the Lord is long suffering. But we're here to tell you, hey, don't don't trip. Because y'all count that day slackness. But one day unto the Lord is, is uh, uh, a thousand years is as one day unto the Lord. It says, and deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation behavior of the wicked. Lot, he was in it. Lot, I'm pretty sure he wasn't making a, a, a plea to the Mosai when he was seeing the shit that he was seeing. Abraham was afar off and he was just concerned for his nephew and his, you know, his family that was there. You know, but Lot, he was, man, he was vexed every day. Because he was surrounded by the wickedness, and that's how we feel too in this in this wicked place. <clears throat> in the in the moment you voice, you know, how you feel about this this wickedness, you're gonna you're gonna be uh, condemned for it. You're gonna be ostracized. You're gonna be demonized. You're gonna be called a bigot, an extremist, a terrorist. All right. All the all the social justice warriors, you know that that you basically. It's, it's law to be uh, PC. You can't have your own uh, uh, opinion. That's why the Lord said, who shall rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? It says, verse 8, for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. All right, his, his soul, his, his, his spirit was very agitated. Because you got to see grown-ass men burning their lust towards each other, man. Just imagine a bunch of shack-sized Hamites, all right, muscular, but they walking around <laughs> having sword fights, sausage fests. That's, that, that's vexing to a, a, a man that's, that's righteous. All right? You know, women licking each other down, all type of stuff. And they was doing it publicly. So let's uh let's let's opt from that and let's get some more scripts. Let's go to Job 34. Because I'm just proving that the most high in scripture is a just power, man. He was justified in all his judgments. And you devils, you you're you're you never been a righteous judge. Look at your court system. Look at how marriage has fell apart in 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 the, in the average household in the West is 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 totally obliterated, man. There's no family structure or unit, you know. Is is basically, you know, marriage is 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 dead in in America, man. There's a few people that still do it, but marriage is dead for the most part, thanks to your judgments. All right, this is uh, Job 34 and 9. It says, For he said, It profited a man nothing that he should delight himself with the Most High. Therefore, hearken unto me, you men of understanding. Far be it from the Most High that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. 
And guess what? Going back to the beginning, it was set before us, life and death. Let me get uh, the Apocrypha real quick. The Lord gave the ramifications. He gave the boundaries. If you walk in these ways, if you keep these, these commandments, these uh, instructions, you will live. But if you, you know, walk away from it, you, you, you deviate from it, you veer off to the, to, to the left, you, you'll die. Let's get a Sirach 15 and 17. It says, before man is life and death, and whether him liketh shall be given him. All right. And a lot of our people, because they're addicted to their the, 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 the pleasures of their flesh, they choose death. And that's why death reigns supreme in the earth. Because when you serve your flesh, you basically serve sin. Because your sin is 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 naturally addicted. Your, your, your flesh is naturally addicted to sin. It lusts to sin. All right. So people, they, they create justifications around their flesh. And thus, that's why it says in uh, Proverbs, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, which is based off of his emotions tied to his flesh. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end or the end or of are the ways of death. And that's the direction that they were in going back to um the days of Noah. During the days of Noah, they was everybody was just wandering off, doing what the hell they wanted to do. All right, Genesis uh six chapter. See, he'll tell you that the most is a murderer because he killed off you know, all those souls and only saved Noah and his family and those animals to, to live through it, but he killed off the rest of the people. So by that definition, he's the devil. And he, he totally took what Yahweh Shai said out of uh, context. He said, you are of your father, the devil, the lust of your father, he will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning. That's going back to the serpent. The serpent was a murderer because guess what? He, he lied to Eve. He lied he, he he lied to her. He put it in her mind that it's all right to eat of the tree of knowledge the knowledge of good and evil. And that's what opened up the portal of of of, of death to the sons of God. He did that. Real quick, let's get a uh, wisdom of Solomon. Because prior to that, we were immortal and we walked in the ways of righteousness. We didn't really know wickedness until that interaction between the serpent, which was the devil, and Eve. That's why it says in, um, also in Sirach 26 and 25, of the women became the beginning of sin and through her we all die. That's because she listened to the damn uh, serpent and he beguiled her. And she shared that knowledge with Eve and it, and it's like she shared it with Adam. And that's when they begin to practice wickedness. And that came with the penalty of death. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 23, it says, For the Most High created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Ne nevertheless, through envy of the devil, that the serpent, came death into the world. And they that do hold of his side do find it. All right? And Eve, she took hold of his side because she listened to him. He pretty much told her, you wouldn't die. If you eat from that tree, you're not going to die. You're going to be as a god and a goddess, knowing both both sides, good and evil. And she fell for it, and it was pleasant in her sight. She liked what she heard. And they got all involved into the, those practices. Now, you, know, you want to know what was going on from that generation on down to the time of Noah? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 14. And this is why the Lord had to clear it, clear it out. He had to flush it out. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Uh, let me see. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14. I guess I'll, I'll read the, the, the first uh, couple of verses 
Because really, what you when you read this uh, chapter, he's talking about idolatry, and it's like he's comparing the wooden idols to Noah's wooden uh, ark or boat that he was in. Because in that during that time in the world, it was heavy idolatry. Idolatry is the main influence of perverse behavior in in the earth. That's why there's all type of perverse satanic rituals involved when commemorating these idols from all these different nations from child sacrifice to blood drinking orgies all type of rituals being performed is, is just flat out wickedness man it alters your, your your mindset so this is a wisdom of solomon 14 and one it says again one preparing himself to sell and about to pass through the ra raging waves call upon a piece of wood more rotten than the vessel that carried him. For verily desire to, of gain de, devised that, and the workman built it by his skill. And we know Noah, you know, the Lord gave him the instruction to start building that ark. All right? Because the Lord was getting ready to destroy the world because throughout those generations, there was a lot of corruption. All right? We always go into this chapter. It talks about how the sons of God they intermingle with the daughters of men, the, the, the women of the other nations, all right? And the sons of God, they had the ways of the Most High, you know, with them. The, the law of the Most High was, uh, it was, it was uh, oral at the time, but they had that way before uh, Moses. Moses got it, it was actually written in stone, but before Moses... It was carried down and passed down through Oracle. So they had the way and they knew the way and they walked in it. And as long as they walked in it, they lived a, a mighty long time. But once they start to integrate with the heathen that, 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 that were foreign to those ways and our people became under that influence and they start to deviate from their way and follow the way of the heathen. And it's, it's been the same reoccurrence you know, since we've been here, man, as the sons of the power, later known as the children of Israel, constantly backsliding, all right, disobeying the, the, the Heavenly Father's instruction, his commands, breaking all the covenants that he made with us. So this was responsible for the Lord doing what he did during this time when he flooded the earth. The corruption was too great. So let's read it. All right. It's a. Uh, Genesis 6, and I'm going to jump down. I don't, wanna, I don't even want to get into the breakdown of, you know, the, the, the giants, which basically, you know, they call it the Nephilim, which the, the Hebrew word is Napoleon, which means fallen ones. This is when the sons of God begin to fall from the Most High. They, they fell from his, his favor. They became angry with him, and thus he reduced their, their uh, stature. They, this is how they left their first estate. All right. And the Lord put them into the chains of darkness, which is, you know, those those bodies are right, that that lust to sin. All right. So it says verse five, it says, and God saw that the wickedness was of, of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. You know, so, you know, what was going on? You know, when that that have that made the Heavenly Father feel this way, that he felt like he wanted to just, you know, do away with what he created. You know? Because the earth was still fairly new. Right, this wasn't, you know, tens of thousands of years later. So let's go back and let's go here. You'll see why. It says, uh, back in Wisdom of Solomon 14, it says, verse 3, By thy pro providence, O Father, governor fit, for thou hast made a way in the sea and a safe path in the waves, showing that thou canst save from all danger, yea, though a man went to sea without art. Nevertheless, thou wouldest not that the works of thy wisdom should be idle, and therefore do men commit their lives to a small piece of wood and passing through the rough sea in a weak vessel are saved. 
For in the time of old, also when the proud giants perished, all right, what I just read in Genesis 6, well, I didn't just read it, but, you know, you see it right there up above in Genesis 6 and 4. All right, it says, and these, and they weren't like literal giants, like meaning they were 15 feet in the, in the, in the sky and shit, 15 feet in the air. No, the, these giants were, they were men of uh, renown. They were famous. They were known. They were the sons of, of the power, man. They were mighty. But the Lord, you know, brought their end. It says, when the proud giants perished, the hope of the world governed by the hand escaped in a weak vessel, talking about uh, Noah and his family, and left to all ages a seed of generation. You know, because we know that through Noah was preserved, you know, the families of the earth through, through his sons. He had Ham, Shem, and Japheth. You could read uh, Genesis, the 10th chapter. They went on to basically have, you know, nations come out of them. All right. It says, for it blesses the wood whereby righteousness cometh. But that which is made with hands is cursed as well, as well, it's like a, as well it as he that made it. He, because he made it and it, because being corruptible, it was called God. So people back then were so quick to worship, you know, vessels and, and, you know, things that were made of the elements. It was worshiping creations rather than the creator. And the most high is a jealous power. So you damn right he had a reason to, you know, you know to, to feel, you know, remorseful that he even made man. It says, for the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto the most high, man. You know, walking around like a bunch of atheists. And he saw he's like the top atheist of the planet, man. Just in his behavior alone, you know he's 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 godless. He's he's profane by nature. And this is getting into um idolatry. All right, you get into idolatry and you know what it causes is is spiritual fornication, man. All right, and it, it definitely corrupts you. That's why it says going back to Genesis six. That they corrupted their way on the earth. The wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And when you jump down, Genesis 6 and uh, 11, the earth was also corrupt before the Most High, and the earth was filled with violence. And the, and the powers looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Okay? So this was what was going on. They was in the spirit of idolatry, the lust of their flesh. They had high level demons on them that were proud as hell, just like they are today. And it's even worse today now than it was back then. So let's let's jump down. And uh, I'm going to start at verse 21. It says, and this was an occasion to deceive the world for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks the inc incommunicable name meaning the names of those idols you know the lord don't even want us to utter the names of those idols moreover this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of the most high but whereas they lived in a great war of ignorance just like today people don't know the most high at all nor his ways those so great plagues called they peace, for whilst they slew their children in sacrifices, or used secret ceremonies, or made revelings of strange rites, in other words, rituals, which is all satanic, man. All right, unnatural practices, ceremonial uh, orgies, all type of shit, right? They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. You know, everything was just totally corrupted, man. It couldn't keep their marriages pure. So it was probably wife swapping back then. You know, you had them triangle relationships, open marriages. None of this shit that these wicked people do today, that's not new. They was doing it back then. All right, it says, But either one slew another traitorously or grieved them by adultery. All right, creeping behind your, your friend's back. 
you know, women creeping on their husbands. So that there are there reign in all men without exception, blood, manslaughter, death, and dissimulation. I mean, uh, what, 20, yeah, verse 25. All right. Basically a bunch of, you know, robbery, deceit, corruption, faithlessness, disorder. That's what this is describing, man. Dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury, disquieting of good men. Forgiveness of good turns, defiling of souls, the people corrupting their soul. That's big today. Everybody's quick to sell their soul because everybody got a price. Everybody's soul here got a price, man. The changing of kind, you know, and that's 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 heavy. Biden, he's for it. He says he got your back if you do this. Disorder in marriages. You got a uh, polyandry where women got multiple husbands. That's that's not that's filthy. That's filthy as hell, man. That's 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 confusion. It's unclean. It's total wickedness, man. That's why the Lord had laws to keep us from this evil. But people said, well, we're gonna do what the hell we want to do. Adultery and shameless uncleanness. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause and end of all evil. For either they are mad when they be merry or prophesy lies or live unjustly or else lightly forswear themselves. For in so much as they trust in the idol, trust is in idols which have no life, though they swear falsely, yet they took, yet they look not to be hurt. Albeit for both causes shall they be justly punished. Both because they thought not well of the Most High, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit, despising holiness. For it is not the power of them by whom they swear, but it is the just vengeance of sinners that punisheth always the offense of the ungodly. So it was always about the punishment of the ungodly. All right? As long as you're ungodly, you're going to be punished. And that was what was going on, man. The ungodliness is at an all-time high. So let's go from there to uh, Sirach 40. And guess what? You devils, you give the license for it to go on. All right? You condone it. You, 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 there's no laws against any of the things that the Lord say thou shalt not do. Because you're the man of sin, as the Bible says. You're, you're the man of lawlessness, man. The law does not go forth when, when, when abominations are committed. Judgment never goes forth. The law is slack because you're in power. You're, you're proving that you're the devil. And you don't do nothing that the Bible says. All right? Sirach 40 and verse uh, 8, it says, Such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast, that is sevenfold of more upon sinners. Death and bloodshed strife and sword calamities famine tri tribulation and the scourge these things are created for the wicked not for the righteous and for their sake came the flood all right and that's balanced man because if the if, if it if if the lord didn't bring these punishments these penalties then it would just be an overflow of wickedness which right now it actually is which is the reason why the Lord is going to come and press it down. Joel 3 and 13. You're going to say that the Lord is a devil for basically being a, a God of, of justice, judgment, for not allowing too much wickedness to go on? Only the devil. Joel 3 and 13. Put ye in a sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down for the press is full, the fats overflow, for the wickedness is great. All right. And that's why we got the day of, of the Lord, the day of judgment. He's going to bring all this into account, man. And you devils are definitely going to be a part of that. You're going to be a big part of that. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? He gonna press. He gonna stomp on that wine press with with all your blood coming, 
coming up to its garment. All right. So you're you're the devil, man. And don't try to project you yourself onto our Heavenly Father, man. You're the murderer. You're the liar. This type of behavior is what's giving you information 24-7 on mainstream media, mainstream news. They do it just like that. And people just eat it up. It's all one and the same to me. NBC News, ABC News, CNN, TikTok. So you got to be prudent, man. All right. The most sides, not he's he's not the devil. Now, he made the devil because he created both sides. He made good and evil. Let's get that real quick. And guess what? Your you you your role is to is to play the devil. And our role is to be the righteous. And this is all the duality of the most high. All right. He he made he he created Satan. He even made the, the bet with Satan. To, to tempt uh, Job, you know, and and he tested Job and, and and shown that Job, his integrity was 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 pure, his faith was 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 whole. It was intact. There was nothing that Satan can do to to uh, to alter Job, and that was the purpose, man. So Rock thirty three and fourteen it says, "Good is set against evil and life against death." So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon the, all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. All right? And that's all for balance sake, man, because the Lord, a false balance is, is an abomination. Just like you need good, you need evil. Just like you need light, you need, you need darkness in order for you to have uh, light. In order for there to be bitterness, there must be sweet. In order for there to be sweet, there must be bitterness or bitter. All right? In order for there to be peace, there got to be war. Because there's a time and purpose for everything under the heavens, man. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot more scriptures that... that you know, I, I I could go into, but I think the point is 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 already proven. I, I think I went longer than I even expected, so I might have to premiere this one. But you know, th this guy is out of his freaking mind. He don't know what the hell he's talking about. All right, you're a damn idiot. All right, and you're the devil, man. Your 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 father going back to the the serpent. All right, he's the devil. He brought death into the world. All right. And then we can't forget about Cain, that wicked one that slew his brother. He was the he was a murderer. Damn, now, now I gotta now I gotta get it. Go to first John three real quick. Yeah, first John three. In uh, verse 8, it says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God, or which who the world called Jesus Christ, Yahushai, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And what was the works of the devil? He brought death into the world. When Yahushai died on that cross, he condemned uh, death. He condemned sin in the flesh. Because the devil, he, he gave Eve... This, the license to sin. She didn't listen to the Heavenly Father. She listened to the damn devil. And he gave her the license to sin. The Lord do not give, he do not uh, give any man license to sin. So Yahweh Shai came to destroy that. That we might have uh, life. Everlasting life. And and guess what? He already got the, the victory for us. Uh, he overcame the wicked one, and guess what? His elect are also going to overcome the wicked one. All right? Whosoever is born of the Most High do have not commit sin, because we walk in the Spirit, right? For his seed remaineth in him, 
and he cannot sin because he is born of the Most High. In this, the children of the Most High are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of the Most High, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, who was that devil, who slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. And, and Cain and, and uh, the serpent in the garden, that's the same soul. That's the same spirit. The serpent, you know, he came back later on as Cain. And then later on down the line as uh, Esau. And that same hatred that Cain had carried on. Because you saw that same energy in Esau trying to slay his brother Jacob. And it's been that way ever since, and it's still that way to this day. That's why our people have no idea how how far back our history go and why we hate each other the way we do. Jake tripping off of how these Edomites, these so-called white people hate, you know, our people is, is deeply rooted. It goes all the way back, man. Because these people are the, the seed of the devil. And they hate you because you're naturally the seed of the righteous, even though you're under the seduction and, and, and spirit of, of your wicked, evil twin brother of the devil. You see? So, yeah, that, that, that's, that's it, man. All right, I, I pretty much said what I had to, you know, say in the spirit. And uh, Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. And until the next lesson, Shalom.